Every year, a very few enormously gifted and very lucky people will receive Oscars for the best movies, from best original screenplay to best adapted screenplay, and of course, best picture. And the Oscar goes to... What's behind that notion? Best. I say three things. Three things that mark every robust screenplay, but which are realized exceptionally in the winners. Drama, suspense, and momentum. What gives a story drama? What gives a story suspense? What gives a story momentum? Let me offer three very condensed explanations of each of the three, and to make them clear, let me illustrate them by two popular films, Oppenheimer and Barbie. I'll start with momentum. American audiences want their movies to do just that, move. They want a constant, propulsive forward movement. The worst thing an audience can say about a movie is that it's slow, it drags. What generates that momentum? It comes from what I call the tear. Films start with a status quo. Characters are living their normal routines when something crucial interrupts their way of life. So crucial that as they come to see, their lives have in fact been torn apart, the tear. Though they may unusually do try to go back to the status quo, they can't. You guys ever think about dying? The tear is like a fist through a drum. The tear is irreparable. This becomes the plot. Confronted with the tear, protagonists try to find a way to restore their lives. But no matter how ingeniously they try, the tear is irreversible. They can't go back to the way things were. So they have to invent a new way of life. Barbie discovers that the status quo no longer works in Barbie land. She can no longer float down from the second floor of her dollhouse. Her heels fall flat on the ground. She has to figure out what this means for herself and the other Barbies and what she can do about it. Oppenheimer is rooted in a historical tear. When the Americans discover the potential of nuclear fission and learn that Nazi Germany is working on a nuclear weapon, the clock starts ticking to build an atomic bomb first. Otherwise, the war will be lost. So it's up to the protagonist, J. Robert Oppenheimer, to accomplish this astonishing scientific feat. But regardless of whether he succeeds in building the bomb first, the very discovery of nuclear fission and its potential for apocalyptic destruction has upended the status quo of warfare and international security. Just as Barbie in the end cannot return to Barbie land and winds up going, for good or ill, to her first gynecologist. The tear can never be repaired. What can be done? This brings us to drama. Drama is a Greek word. It simply means doings. Drama centers on actions. Specific actions? Yes. A century ago, a Frenchman, Etienne Surio, convincingly argued that all dramatic action centers on triangles. Someone or some group wants something that is blocked by someone else or by another group. Drama is what happens when they engage. Who will get the thing? Who will lose it? Oppenheimer wants to build a bomb. Barbie wants to stabilize Barbie land. The army and then almost everyone else wants to interfere with Oppenheimer. Mattel wants to stop Barbie. Who will win? Think of football. American film and American football share exactly the same structure. Two sides, one ball, an hour or two to own the field. Turn the teams into characters and you have the foundation for plot. If triangles generate drama, what produces that final quality? Suspense. Just as novels are built out of chapters, films are built out of 15 to 20 short sequences. And each sequence traces a specific triangle. But here's the key to suspense. The character who starts off the sequence trying to get what she or he wants never succeeds. Never? Never, except for the very end of a film, virtually every sequence ends in some sort of disappointment, frustration, failure, loss, or the like. And so we start again. What's Oppenheimer? What's Barbie going to do now? Sequence following sequence. Oppenheimer finds that first the army and then the physics establishment and then almost everyone else resists him. Barbie discovers that she can't make friends with high school girls in their school. And then Ken discovers horses. And finally, there's Mattel. Of course, sometimes it does indeed look as though the goal, the object, has been achieved. But almost invariably, that turns out to be a Pyrrhic victory. It's only an apparent win covering a much more serious defeat. That's why we keep watching, because the characters, especially the characters we side with, keep losing, and we want them to win, so we stay to the end. Of course, in the hands of the enormously talented people who wrote the screenplays, all of this becomes astonishingly sophisticated and nuanced. But in the end, fundamentally, we watch for those three things, momentum, drama, suspense.